Yo, what's going on, y'all? It's your boy So So, and welcome back to the channel for another episode of Fight Rewind. This time we're previewing BKFC 62, and tonight joining the show we got the featherweight champion Kai Hefty Back Stewart. What's going on, brother? Dude, it's been a long time coming. I'm super happy to be on the show. Uh, what, what's better than So So? From my, you're from Miami, correct? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. sir. So we're we're coming down into the Lions Den. I'm coming down into my opponent's home crowd, but you know, none of that's gonna affect me. I'm coming down with a smile. I'm gonna get to meet some nice people like you. And it is my birthday week. Fuck, dude. It, every everything is just turning out. And uh, June 21st is gonna be a movie, and I'm I become the king of BKFC. So cannot wait, Let's baby. Get it. Let's get it, man. Before we walk into the interview, bro, let the people know where they can follow, follow your journey on social media and any sponsors you want to shout out. Absolutely. So uh, on social media, uh, Kai HB145, that's K-A-I-H-B-145. That's where you're going to find me on Instagram, Twitch, YouTube. Facebook is Kai Hefty Bag Stewart. Uh, that Facebook, I, I do post quite a bit to Facebook, but Instagram has my biggest following. So, you know, take your pick. And if you love gaming, I'm on Twitch. Uh, and then shout out to my two biggest sponsors. I have Native Grown um, and Silverleaf. They are my dispensary sponsors. Uh, Native Grown, best flower in Montana. Silverleaf is the best edibles, and I love them. Uh, love them both. And from there, if I could take it away, so, so. Let's get it, man. You know what, bro? I'm 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 glad that they let fighters, you know, partake in that because I think that it's something that really helps them keep a clear mind, keep keep uh, you know, the steady focus on training and and recovering, and and it really helps the body, man. So I'm glad you shouted out those sponsors, bro. We're we're yeah. pretty close to that getting that 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 same level down here in Florida, man. Um, uh, but no. now that we're connecting Florida and Montana. You know, one of the things that most impressed me in your journey in BKFC, right, because I've been covering BKFC now for two and a half years, is how quickly you've rose to the level of championship fights. What would you say, right, in your upbringing, in, in your uh, upbringing, your history, what kind of led you to have that clear mentality to become a, the first, uh, one of the youngest BKFC championship champions at 22 years old? Well, first of all, uh, shout out wrestling. Uh, I'm a wrestler, and wrestlers will always do it best. And uh, that that's just been a mentality that I'm gonna I'm gonna have for the rest of my life. And I and as a coach, I'm gonna coach generations mm -hmm. to come to have that mentality for life. Once you wrestled, everything else in life is easy. Dan Gable said it best. Um, so from there, man, I it, it became first. It was BKFC to get a check for a puppy. I didn't buy a puppy. I took another fight because they came to my hometown. I just kept selling tickets. And then they, they gave me number two at the time, Rusty Crowder, on like two-week notice because uh, Jack Claffey pulled out. And right. right there, right there is where I I you have to bet on yourself. And I bet on myself. And I mm. went against the number two guy. And I said, hey, let's make it a number one contender fight. And they actually honored that. So um, they, they saw something in me. I've seen something in me since I was four years old uh, wrestling. So uh, I'm glad that it's finally coming to fruition. Yeah, man. And you know what? When when we talk about combat sports, right, wrestling seems to be like the best foundation for whatever sport you're in because it allows you to build power right in your lower half of the body, which is where you can get a lot of action. Right. Even when you're on the golf course. Right. Now that we were talking about golf, thinking about it, like you need those hamstring muscles to work with those knee muscles to get that ball nice and far like we like. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, that's whenever we talk about my um, uh, if we compare all my my stats, my strength and conditioning stats, my strongest suit is my cardio and my legs. My legs are um, um, like I've never really lifted in my entire life until starting DL mm. training systems. Um, nice. But uh, but whenever he tested me first up uh, before even starting with him, he goes, your legs are on time. Your legs are on time. So, so absolutely, you're you're right on the money there. Let's let's talk about about your conditioning and the the speed and the heart that you fight with, right? Because that's what I think gives you the biggest advantage whenever you're facing an opponent in the BKFC ring. This next challenge that you're facing, you're an undefeated fighter. You're facing another undefeated fighter. This kid is coming in with a lot of momentum in in, in a dial, right? How do you think? Dragging somebody to the deep waters affects them in the fight because you've been able to do it twice in your de title defenses. 
Yeah, so I just want to—I I keep using HD as an example, and I don't—I don't want people to see this as disrespecting to him because I do have a lot of respect for him, and I became the fighter that I became. Fighter. I, I became the fighter that I became because of like there was a little bit of a fear factor. It's bare knuckle. I'm going against mm-hmm. a, a very good boxer, but you saw my relentless consistency of what I do best, and that's break people and uh, break like breaking people is just different. And like if you've never broken somebody you're you're not going to understand why i'm smiling uh breaking somebody and taking a soul from uh, a piece of their soul from them because i've been broken you know that that's right. how i know that's why i know it feels so fucking good because it's hard to break me but like college yeah. wrestling rooms youth wrestling growing up wrestling with your coach at practice because he wants to break you um being able to take that piece of somebody's soul is is what drives me and and we saw that on full display with hd and he's a very talented fighter and honestly i don't i just don't see duran as being on the talent level as hd i don't see him being on the conditioning level the power i think that he has i think he has power in a different way he's not punching with power he's just putting his weight into it you know that's Mm -hmm. why he's not KOing people to sleep he's tkoing them and then the people that he's fought are sissies and they they give up and then they're up at the 10 count magically so um you know i i just think there's going to be a huge um a huge gap here and and I'm I'm very grateful for the opportunity to do it in his hometown. And it's going to be a packed show too, right? Because every time that there's been a, an event at the Hard Rock man, it it gets more and more and more packed with fans because obviously we know this gr- sport is growing so fast. Um yeah. let's talk a little bit more about the the Brian Gallo fight because you know, you you mentioned the the opponents that he's faced, right? And they might not be up to BKFC top 5 contender status. You've defended the bell against two of the best guys in your division, right? We're talking about Louis Lopez and HD Howard Davis. Both of those guys present something different, right? Louis is a warrior who always willing to come forward, um, yeah. willing to take some punches to land his punches, right? And with HD, we have one of the best boxers in BKFC. Man, when when you look at that resume, how do you feel when people kind of bet against you and say, well, maybe, uh, you know, Kai's not going to be able to meet the power or whatever it is that Brian is coming with? Yeah, yeah. a lot of it boils down to just being well-rounded because I, I give Duran mm-hmm. respect. I don't have six finishes. You know, his his schedule sucks. Like, uh, the, like, I think I could finish the people that he finished with the exception of Louis. He beat – he. If we can go through on how Louis came out and said that he wasn't training at all for the Duran fight, you know, we can go yeah. into that. But he has six finishes, and finishing people can be hard sometimes. Uh, but after that, like, he's not well rounded. We saw Louis push him, and that's an out of shape, off the couch Louis. Uh, so Br- Duran in an interview said that he's going to fight fire with fire. And it's like, yeah, Louis fought me with fire. And yeah, I lost the first two rounds. But the second we came out in that third round, what happens whenever your cardio tank's gone, Brian? Yep. Like, yeah. like you can do whatever you want. Like, like, I don't care what you bring to the table. I know that I'm gonna do it all of it better. And you know, the casual fan sees six and zero with six finishes. That that's that's a stud. I mean, I'm five and zero with three five round wars. Um, right. And you know, I'd bet the latter every time because you know, a, a war tests people. And you know, Duranak actually has his war. He has a war. It was a war against Louis. And, uh, I hope, I hope the line comes out as me being an underdog because I want, I want my friends and family to make a lot of money. <laughs> That's a great point, right? Cause uh, the hard rock bet is definitely going to be up and I'm sure they have better in Montana, which is going to be up. Um, oh, yeah. but you know what you mentioned something, right? And that, that seems to be what separates the champions in this sport, right? Who are you fighting for the bill? Who are you defending it against? And what are you doing to gain it? When you talk about experience, you having three championship fights, that's a big deal in my opinion. And I think that may give you the edge on June 21st. Yeah. I, and I, I agree. Experience always like uh, there's been people that I've wrestled against that I, I think skill for skill, I'm way better than, uh, but I've wrestled, uh, but their experience was, was more, mm. and you know, they, they, they would gut out the victories and uh, I've been on that losing end. And now that I'm the experienced guy, 
I'm the battle tested guy. I'm the the underdog. People don't expect this little white boy from Montana to be a bare knuckle superstar. But guess what? Right. I'm going to continue to I, like honestly. They they told me where do you want to fight, and I said I don't care where I fight as long as it's in that guy's hometown. Whoever I'm fighting, it needs to be in their hometown. They mm. didn't give me a name, and then all of a sudden it was Duran in his hometown, and that that's what I want to bring to the table. And uh, Unfortunately, with all my guys uh, like Lorenzo Hunt, Luis Palomino, with them losing, uh, the pound for pound list needs somebody new, and uh, mm. the organization needs a a new homegrown face. Yeah, we have Mike Perry, but he made his name somewhere else. I am a debut pro in BKFC June twenty first. I will be the king of the organization, and I think that's just so fucking surreal right now. But act I mean, like that, you've been there. A- yeah, that's a great that's a great other title to add to it, right? You got the youngest BKFC champion, quickest champion in the flyweight division, and then like you've defended it three times, you're getting ready to defend it for the third time here straight. Um, and then in, in somebody else's backyard, right? I wanted to ask you, bro, does that give you a little bit less pressure, right? Because you're like, you know, I'm going in there nice and easy. There's no worry about helping so and so with tickets from the hometown. I'm just here to pull up, fight. Get my belt and go back home. Which one is easier, yeah. fighting at home or fighting on the road? Man, so I've become very good at selling tickets, and I sell yeah. a lot of. T- I, I I sell a lot of tickets. I I, I sell. I think uh, ticket for ticket, I sell the same as Duran. Duran sells more money worth because tickets in Hollywood, Florida, are three times the amount as Great Falls, Montana. Um, right. So yeah, you can flash that money all you want, but it's like I sold just as many. Sorry, I just live in a different area. Like, um, <laughs> but no, uh, there's definitely that aspect. And honestly, he's in the bright lights of Miami. He's posting with his cars. He's doing this, doing that. He, I think he's doing too much. And I, mm. I think his sponsorship levels were very, very high. And I think he's trying to cash out because I think he bit off more than he can chew. I think it's just like HD. I think HD is very good, mm. but he wasn't tested before me. Getting tested, his first test was in a world title fight. You know, I was tested by Rusty yeah. Crowder by by taking that fight. And you know, and I think it's going to be the same ball game with Duran. He's going to get hit, and he's going to get hit hard, and he's going to be like, "Oh, fuck!" He's going to be like, "I'm <laughs> fucked." I mean, that's the reaction that a lot of people have when they meet you in the ring, right? And uh, mm-hmm. your record proves that, and the that belt, that nice belt you got back there, also proves that. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, yeah. let's finish it on a, on a fun note, right? We talked about, you know, the training, we talked about the fight, we talked about the experiences. What do you plan on bringing to the stage to make the Miami fans excited about this fight? Like what type of music are you going to walk out to? Like, are you going to have like a special presentation for Gallo? Like what's, what's the move for the walkout right now? Don't, without giving away too much, of course. Yeah. You know, we, I might switch up my walkout song. Um, there's just a song that's been on repeat in my head and it's, um, it's special to me, especially with the, the first couple words that come out. It just shows that, you know, I'm fighting with a lot of pride. I'm grateful for where I'm at. I'm, I have surrendered Mm -hmm. outcomes. Like, I have put in the work. I have done what I needed to do. All I have to do is show up and the rest takes care of itself. I can promise you, you know, I, I don't really have anything special planned for the walkout. I do. I, I'm going to bring my special vibe. I bring the vibe every mm. time. And everybody loves seeing the smile on my face. Mr. Mustache, the great hair, yes, right. the great face, you know, everything that we got. Um, but in the end, it's it's me versus me. So it doesn't really matter what the rest thinks because I'm going to leave the hard rock with a smile on my face no matter what happens. Um, yeah. I just want to go yeah, out there and awesome. have fun and and prove and prove what I can do to myself. Because I, like I said, I've said it a thousand times. I'm not supposed to be a bare knuckle champion. I've never been in a street fight outside mm. the ringer cage. I I like barely liked MMA because like I was going to school to be a fucking doctor. Like I shouldn't be where I'm at. So I'm just, I'm grateful for where I'm at. And, uh, you know, especially with McGregor posting and I like McGregor and I are about to be boys. So after I knocked Duran out, me and McGregor are going to be homies. So, I mean, I hope he's there ringside to catch these fucking championship fights, man, because I think that's one of the best thing that BKFC does. Right. Um, they put top talent versus top talent in majority of their, their big shows. And down here with three championship belts on the line is going to be amazing. You mentioned yeah. something interesting, bro. Um, I want to get your opinion as, as one of the top dogs in BKFC about like what 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 kind of emotion you had, what kind of thoughts you had when you heard that McGregor was 
coming on as a part partner here in BKFC? So I was 16 years old sitting at Beef O'Brady's in Montana before I even had any aspirations to be a fighter. I was a wrestler my whole life, so I had mm-hmm. that competitive edge. I wanted to become a world champion or Olympic champion in wrestling. Um, and I saw McGregor knock out Aldo. And I watched McGregor's ride. I watched the Mendez fight. I've wow. seen all this. And so McGregor's my – actually, <laughs> I'd never, I never do this. Oh, look at that. <laughs> I've had I've had that for a long time now. And oh gosh, now I messed You're it up. You're all right. You're good. You're good. <laughs> all right. Oh my gosh. Yeah, Yo, you're Why good, champ. Don't worry about it. Cool. Perfect. But with that, it's like McGregor's been an idol of mine. I like after I beat the dog shit out of somebody in a high school match, my la it was actually my last match at my hometown. Um I, I, I strutted it off because I like <laughs> the guy that I went a close match with in the state finals the year before I wrestled him at the biggest, the biggest tournament, the biggest all class tournament of the year mm-hmm. in my hometown at my home school. And I just beat the brakes out of him. And then afterwards went like that. And <laughs> the like, McGregor I, I, walk. I, we're going to try to find that video and bring it back for uh, a little bit of a montage because I did it after that match. I did. Did it after I knocked out the guy in my second fight. And, um, you know, McGregor's now my boss. So life is literally full circle and crazy. Full and, circle, um, man. So if, to me, McGregor being a, a part of this is just a lot more special. And I'm I'm going to make the most out of it. Me just being on, like, being reshared on uh, his story was like a dream come true. But you got to act like you've been there. And I think there's a lot more to come for me especially only being 23 years old, but I'm, I'm, I'm grateful. I'm getting my opportunity in life early. I love it, man. Spoken like a true champion. Kai can, can't wait to see you perform again. June 21st at the hard rock is going down. It's going to be great. Flyway bell is on the line. This guy's looking to make some more history in BKFC in his young, young career, bro. But we're here for it, man. Um, Again, thank you so much, brother. Let the people know where they can follow you on social media and uh, shout out to your sponsors as well. Heck yeah. So I have Native Grown and Silver Leaf. They're the best dispensaries in Montana. Uh, we also have Sing Contracting, Dude Wipes, uh, Death Grip Wax. We have Market Cipher. He, uh, um, we're about to do some push ups, 100 push ups a day to get crypto Bitcoin to 100K. Okay. Oh, 100 nice. push ups a day for 100K. We're pumping prices, Market Cipher. We're going to get our, uh, our push-ups on the beach. Uh, fuck, there's, I actually have a crazy sponsorship pool. Bucked Up, I'm officially sponsored by Bucked Up for the first time. Um, so I've been an affiliate for a while, but now uh, the CEO, uh, we we finally got a deal in. And I'm very grateful because I've, I've used Bucked Up since I worked at a TNT, uh, Total Nutrition and Tanning in town. Um, mm. They... Um, they got bucked up in and I was like, fuck it. I love deer. Like I deer hunt. Let's do it. Get bucked. <laughs> and cool. I was like, and I was like, get bucked up. This is like what I would always say. And then now, uh, now I'm sponsored by them. So life is crazy. Life is last crazy. but not least, uh, not last, but not least, but last sponsor DL training systems, my strength and cardio, my strength and conditioning is on a different level. And just the atmosphere that he brings, the people that he brings into my life that he's brought into my life. This fight camp has been crazy. Last but not least, shout out to my main training partner, Brady Heastan. He is 2-0 in the UFC right now, about to make that a three-peat, just like yours truly. Um, he's about to go take on uh, Garrett Armfield, I believe is his first name. It is Armfield, is his last name. Uh, but Brady's ready. Brady's ready, so bet that line. He is an underdog, so uh, go make your fucking money. Let's go, man. Let's go. And we're going to have Brady on here before he blows up because now we got Kai to introduce us, man. Guy, oh, thank yeah. you so much, brother. Keep posting that golf content, man. I can't wait to see you out there. And who knows? Maybe we'll catch a round down here. Hey, uh, I would love to. I know I am going to do a round um, while I'm in Florida on fight week. I don't know when yet. My birthday is the 17th. I might do a birthday stroke. Um, just depends on weight. And we're going to we're gonna have a good time. So once I get to Miami, I'm going to hit you up. And uh, well, maybe li- we can link or do something, uh, you know. We'll figure it uh, out, brother. Hell to the moon. Yeah. We got time. June, we got time. June 21st. You know, right now I call myself King Kai, but June 21st, I become King Kai of BKFC. Yes. So I become Worldwide King Kai because like we talked about, man, BKFC is 
freaking yeah. blowing up. It's one of the it's fastest crazy. growing sports ever, and it's so crazy, man. And I love it because we're both a part of it, and we're going to be yeah. here for the ride, man. Thank you so Hell much yeah. again, Kai, for joining us, brother. I can't wait to see you again in person, brother. Take care. Keep up the training. We'll see you soon. See you soon, brother. Bye. That's Kai, hefty bag, Stewart, flyweight champion, defending his belt for the third time, June 21st at the BK, at the Hard Rock going down, BKFC 62. You're not going to want to miss it. Make sure you guys buy your tickets before it becomes a sellout. You guys know what to do. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend because we're going to keep dropping his just like this. Until next time, peace.